Rawr, rawr. <laughs>
Intrinsic case is a case that has unusual interest in and of itself and needs to be described and detailed. This type of study focuses on the case where the case itself is the primary interest that could be an individual, a specific group, occupation, or an organization. An elderly married couple living with dementia to explore how dementia had impacted on their understanding of home, their everyday life, and their relationship is one of its examples. Wherein, an instrument case study focuses on understanding a specific issue, problem, or concern, or cases selected to best understand a problem. An instrumental case study uses a case to gain insights into a phenomenon. For example, a researcher interested in child obesity rates might set up a study with middle school students and an exercise program. In this case, the children and the exercise program are not the focus. The focus is learning the relationship between children and exercise, and why certain children become obese. Number 4. A hallmark of good qualitative case study is that it presents an in-depth understanding of the case. Like any other qualitative studies, collection of data is very much important. What makes it unique for a case study is it integrates many forms of qualitative data. One source of data is not enough to develop an in-depth understanding of the case. This can range from interviews, to documents, to observations, to audiovisual materials. Number 5. The selection of how to approach the data analysis in a case study will differ. In analyzing a case study, some involve the analysis of multiple units within the case, for example, the school and the school district, while some report the entire case for example, the school district. Also, in some studies, multiple cases are selected to analyze and compare, while on others, only a single case is analyzed. Number 6. A key generating the description of the case involves identifying case themes. These themes may also represent the issues or specific situations to study in each case. These themes can be organized by the researcher including a chronology, analyzed across cases for similarities and differences among the cases, or presented as a theoretical model. Complete finding section of a case study could then involve both a description of the case and themes and issues that the researcher has discovered while studying the case. Lastly, case studies often end with conclusions formed by the researcher about the overall meaning delivering from the case or cases. Skate 1995 call it as assertions. It is spelling patterns or explanations. Let's think about it as the general lessons and understanding from studying the case. But is it too broad for you to think what case study should you conduct? Well, there is three qualitative types of case study. Each type has differences, aims that depending to your goal and objective, but it leading in depth or great understanding. So let's begin in number one. Single instrumental case study. The researcher focuses on an issue or concern and then select one bounded case to illustrate this issue. Therefore, the investigator will find a case that could gain insight to support or to describe the certain issue if there is relationship between the two subjects. For example, a non-reader becomes a reader, a case study of literacy. Next is collective or multiple case study. An issue or concern is again selected, but the inquirer selects multiple case studies to illustrate the issue. This is about how the researcher collects several case studies might help to develop or to differentiate the previous or past case study that might give additional better information on promoting for a new study. So, for example, teacher's work. Lastly, intrinsic case study. It focuses on the case itself. Basically, the researcher would like to conduct my unique situation or un unusual cases that more specifically focus on the case itself, but the interest is to have deep understanding.
from a certain case. For example, evaluating a program or studying a student having difficulty. Another example is the Swedish school system. So, therefore, these three types will help you to know what research case study you would like to observe. Procedures for conducting a case study. Number one, determine if a case study approach is appropriate for studying re the research problem. The inquiry has clearly identifiable cases with boundaries and seeks to provide an in-depth understanding of the cases or a comparison of several cases. For instance, a famous case study about Phineas Gage, a man that had a rod go through his cheek and brain but survive. As a result of the accident, his personality and ability to learn new things seem to be greatly affected. The case study showed how the different areas of the brain related to personality and cognitive ability. 2. Identify the intent of the study and select the case or cases. Investigators should consider the intent and type of case study, which is a single or collective, multi-site or within-site, and intrinsic or instrumental. These are mainly explained earlier in discussion. The case study may involve a subject that is why it is best to choose purposeful sampling which is selected based on the characteristics of a population and the objective of the study and is also known as judgmental selective or subjective sampling. 3. Develop procedures for conducting the extensive data collection drawing on multiple data sources. Multiple data sources is a strategy that also enhances data credibility. Yin recommends six types of information to collect, documents, archival records, interviews, direct observations, participant observation, and physical artifacts. In a case study, data from these multiple sources are then converged in the analysis process rather than handled individ individually. Each data source is one piece of the puzzle, with each piece contributing to the researcher's understanding of the whole phenomenon. This convergence adds strength to the findings as the various strands of data are weighted together to promote a greater understanding of the case. 4. Specify the analysis approach on which the case description integrates analysis themes and contextual information. When it comes to selecting and developing the instrument, there are a number of different possible research designs for case studies, single or multiple case designs, this simply means choosing whether your study will include just one or several cases. The type of analysis can be a holistic analysis of the entire case or an embedded analysis of a specific aspect of the case. For example, a case could be about a school and its response to a new demographic trend or government edict, in which case it would be holistic. If within the school several different classes were studied, then these subunits or many cases would be embedded within the overall case. When multiple cases are chosen, a typical format is to provide first a detailed description of each case and themes within the case, called a within case analysis, followed by a thematic analysis across the case, called a cross case analysis, as well as assertions on an interpretation of the meaning of the case, whether it is instrumental or intrinsic case. As Tinkolin and Guban in 1985 mentioned, this space constitutes the lessons learned from the case and Stick describes them as assertions, wherein assertions can be made partially answer the question. 5. Report the case study and lessons learned by using case assertions in written form. For Stick, the report should be organized and with readers in mind. 
A general reporting structure includes an entry vignette to provide the reader with an inviting introduction to the feel of the context in which the case takes place, an introduction to familiarize the reader with the central features including rationale and research procedures, an extensive narrative description of the case or cases, and its or their context, which may include historical and organizational information important for understanding the case. The study provides detailed and in-depth information to further existing studies, it also faces several challenges that a researcher needs to overcome. Here are four major challenges in conducting case studies. First off, identifying the case to study in a thorough manner may be challenging in a way that the researcher needs to decide which bounded system to study. It may either be broad in scope or narrow in scope. Moreover, the researcher also needs to consider whether to study a single case or multiple cases. Boundaries should also be determined. Such dilemmas are needed to be addressed. Thorough identification of the theme, to which is described as the object or phenomenon to be studied, is very important in order for it to be operational. Second, case study provides little basis for generalization. Since it only deals with only one person or specific group or event, case study are said to lack representativeness of the greater mass with similar instances. Third challenge is that conducting such study is time-consuming and at the same time expensive. Since case study demands gathering of multiple data, finding the applicable ones may require much time, effort, and means. Last on the list is the lack of rigor. Like any other kind of research, case study requires dedication, hard work, and patience. Perhaps because of the long process a researcher should undergo to finish a case study, lack of rigor becomes visible along the way. It is often linked to problems in ethical issues, biases, and subjectivity. Data analysis depends a lot on the interpretation the researcher places on the acquired information. Without passion and rigor, this may fall out in observer bias and it could be that the subjective opinions intrude in the assessment of what the data means, thus creating unreliable findings. In conducting a case study, we must always consider the backstory or history of the patient who is about to undergo the study. For this example, the research is about the disorder called obsessive compulsive disorder or commonly known as OCD and how we must develop some considerations in order to properly diagnose the disease and how we must come up with the underlying treatments that go with it. The research mentioned above was conducted by Dr. Jeanette Zames who is a psychiatry specialist in Milford, Detroit. Dr. Zames completed her residency at Thomas Jefferson University Hospital. According to the abstract of her research study, in which it clarifies that the research method she used is case study, that obsessive-compulsive disorder, or OCD, was considered a rare disorder prior to 1984, when the initial results from the Epidemiologic Catchment Area Survey demonstrated a substantial prevalence of the disorder. Her client was named Kay, and Kay was a 42-year-old Jewish female file clerk in a hospital. She met Kay in 1993 and from then on developed a working relationship with her because Kay was suffering from OCD. Dr. Zames studied the past psychiatric, medical, and psychosocial history of Kay and therefore observed her behavior and doings for about one year. The conclusion of her research states that Kay's case was a complicated one and had multiple diagnoses, in which Kay suffered from OCD since 1990 and remained undiagnosed until Dr. Zames intervened.